Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is school Today, I'm bringing you a 9.2.5 guide. There have been some updates to Miss Weaver since my 9.2 guide, and I figure I'll just do an updated version of it. This is going to be in-depth, so it's going to be a long video. Normally, I try not to make videos too long, but these videos I tend to make as long as possible. Try to get as much information as I can for anyone that's new or wants to know the best ways to play Miss Weaver. And with that said, let's jump right into it. I want to start off with why you would play a Miss Weaver in the first place. I, it's a meme that Miss Weaver really isn't normally the best healer to play, and it's not. And if you're going to play Miss Weaver, I would say get used to the fact that we probably won't ever be an S tier healer. It never really works out for us. We don't have a lot of tools that other healers have. But what we do have is, in my opinion, we are easily the most fun spec to play in the game. And there are ways to outplay people. So I, if you want to have like really good mobility, really high healing output, and just overall just a lot of fun, I would highly recommend playing a Mist Weaver. I, that's the reason I keep playing it. Outside of fun, Mist Weavers have high mobility and large healing output. I love being able to heal people from like 1% health to 100% and like two globals. That's pretty much my draw to the class is how much healing they can output. And then of course the mobility. I cannot play a healer that can't move around the map. Even though other healers have a lot of mobility, nothing compares to Mist Weaver. That's why I love it so much. The two major changes that happened to Mist Weaver since 9.2 is one, Life Cocoon was buffed by 33%. So your life cocoon just heals for a lot more, which is pretty nice. It's very handy. It is noticeable as well. So you, it no longer, I mean, there are some times where it gets absolutely destroyed, but other times, more, more times than not, you, it will give you enough time to actually recover when teams are using offensive cooldowns. And then the other one, the other change is Zen Focus T cooldown got reduced from 45 seconds to 30 seconds. So this is really good versus comps like Jungle and Rogue Mage that kind of capitalize on kicks and and silences on you this helps you kind of recover it, it gives you a chance you know every 30 seconds after their cc chain it gives you a chance to finally recover from their burst cooldowns or their cc chain and actually helps you stabilize your team so overall even though there haven't been many changes the changes have been pretty decent we they're pretty noticeable so that's nice in 925 they added cross faction curing albeit they haven't actually fixed it while recording this video it's june 5th right now and they have not announced when they're going to fix the video fix it so uh we will see hopefully it gets fixed hope sometimes soon but with that said i'll start with the horde race the best race you can go is orc it hardiness is hands down carrying um it is so important for miss weaver because we do die in stun still so having hardiness to do stuns on you is very important and yeah if you don't want to go orc i don't blame you you could go undead i think those are the two best races you can go undead gives you Willow the Forsaken removes fears on you, which is great for Holy Priest, Warlock meta. It's Warlock's kind of got nerfed recently, but Holy Priests are still meta. So use it really good for Priests. And I think that's it. I don't think I've ever... I've No, no, no. I was Volpera on it all. It's not good. No, don't go. It's Orc or Undead. For Alliance, you're going to want to be Human or Night Elf. Both of them are good. In my opinion, I think Human is the best race to go. You can play Human Relentless, which is a Relentless Trinket. I'll talk about Trinkets later, but it reduces CC on you, all CC on you, by 20%. And then you have Every Man for Himself, or I think it was renamed to Will to Survive. I haven't played a Human in a long time. So I think it's Will to Survive, and it, that removes stunts on you. It has a three-minute cooldown. So you have basically, you have a 20% CC reduction with the Relentless Trinket, and then you have a way to get out of stuns, which is really good. Very helpful. So I think that's why Human is probably the best race to go. But Night Elf is good as well. Night Elf gives you Shadow Meld, which lets you, you know, immune, and not immune, but avoid CC if you think it's being cast on you. If you time it right, you could act, you could actually immune CC. If you Shadow Meld when a Windwalker leg sweeps, you can actually immune it, If but you got to get the timing right. So I think overall Human is the best. Night Elf is second best. That be that with that said, dwarf I think is really good. I think gnome is good too. Gnome is good if balance roots are good because they have the escape artist on a one minute cooldown that gets you out of roots. So uh, roots and slows. So you could, you know, root beam. Every, you can get out of every single one. So it really depends on the meta for gnomes. Dwarves I think are pretty good in this meta with assassination rogues, feral druids, uh, affliction warlocks. But affliction warlocks probably not going to see many of them. So. I think you're better off going human or night elf, but don't be afraid to play dwarf, dark iron dwarf, or gnome, because those are good too. All right, so you picked your race. You probably went orc, which is probably the best bet, which is a little unfortunate. And you got to choose what talents you want to use. Now, 
These are my talents. I'll talk about each row and kind of my thought process behind it. The level 15 row, mistrap every time. I Trust me, I've tried it. I want a Chi Wave to be good, but mistrap is just too good because it increases the enveloping misturation by a second and then gives it the bonus healing of 10%. So enveloping mist, if you don't know, is your best heal. It's your best hot. It's, I think it's one of the best hots in the game. So increasing the duration and increase the healing just makes it that much better. In the second row, Chi Torpedo, you're going to use Chi Torpedo 99% of the time. I would recommend playing Tiger's Lust versus Windwalkers, Death Knights, and Mages. That's just my... It uh, depends on what you're queuing with. If you're queuing with Melee, I would play Tiger's Lust because... Especially against Mages, because that way you don't need to dispel Frost Nova, which is their root. You could just Tiger's Lust it and then so save your dispel. Tiger's Lust is really good versus Windwalkers and DKs because DKs have the spamble Chains of Ice and Windwalkers have the spam Disable that will root you so tiger's lust really really good for getting out of those roots and slows everything else play chi torpedo makes it way easier to get cc and to avoid you know people trying to swap to you or trying to do damage and stuff like that so chi torpedo every other every other situation uh in the level 30 row the, i tend to play life cycles over manatee i, I think 99.9% .9 of monks play life play manatee i'm the 0.1% plays life cycles i just like it uh, especially with our Cloud of Focus Legendary. Um, I'll explain what it does in a little bit, but I like Life Cycles. It, it, it honestly doesn't matter. It, it really does not matter what you choose in this row. Mistweavers tend to not run out of mana because if, especially if you use your tools, right, your, your cooldowns, you will tend to not run out of mana. But <clears throat> if you find yourself running out of mana, Manatee could be a better option. For Manatee, you just want to make sure that there's no CC available for you. Or interrupts because it's then it's just a waste of a minute and a half cooldown. Um, but with that said, I I just prefer life cycles. There's really nothing else to it. I there's no crazy. It, I just like it more. Uh, the level 35 row. You're gonna play Ring of Peace every game, especially if you're newer to Mistweaver. Play Ring of Peace every game. If you want to throw games potentially, <laughs> but go big or go home, you could play a Song of chi -Gi in twos. I would not recommend it in threes, even though I do play it sometimes. Song of chi -Gi is a casted spell that cc's the target for six seconds it opens you up to being locked out which is not very good and people can the teams can swap to you because if you don't have ring of peace it's really hard like if you don't have ring of peace you don't have a lot of tools to really get away so i would say play ring of peace 100 percent of the time if you're playing against a team in twos where they can't really punish you for playing Song of chi -Gi. Something like Mages or Boomies or Shadow Priests. Basically, casters play Song of chi -Gi, But even then, it's not even worth it. I would just say play Ring of Peace every single game. It lets you interrupt spells. It lets you move players out of position. It's, it's You could use it in so many different ways. And I, I love Ring of Peace. It is my favorite spell in the game. In the level 40 row, it's really between Healing Elixirs and Diffuse Magic. More... More than likely, you're going to play Healing Elixirs. It just gives you an instant heal. Costs no mana. That heals for 15% of your health. So, again, it costs no mana. And that's that's really important because if teams are, you know, cleaving you or they want to swap to you, or even if they're not hitting you, if there's some dots on you, you can just, boop, pop a Healing Elixir. Boom, 50% of your health. Costs no mana. Free healing. It's amazing. Um, Diffuse Magic, good versus... I, I tend to use it in twos a lot versus like Priest Rogue just because if I dispel Sepsis and I get Mind Games or something, I can't really dispel it, which is really annoying. But that's really the only situation. I can't think of any other situation for Diffuse Magic. Maybe when Destro Locks were good um, a few weeks ago, Diffuse Magic was good for when, you know, they get the Havoc on you and they start Chaos Bolting everybody and Diffuse Magic, uh, you know, does a damage reduction for Magic. But that's really all I can think of. I can't think of any other good use for Diffuse Magic. And then Dampen Harm, not really used. It's a two minute cooldown. It, it's not the greatest. It's it's just a two minute cooldown and you can't use it on anybody. And you, you, there aren't, the meta classes right now don't really do big damage. They do a lot of small damage. So I just feel like you don't get that much value out of it. You're better off just playing Helix or, or Diffuse Magic depending on the situation. In the level 45 row, you're just going to Jade Serpent Statue. That, that's it. Um, it does too much healing. I don't know if these games are from anything soon. I think this is a Keystone. I don't think I have any arenas in here. Uh, but yeah, you're better off just playing Jade Serpent Statue. It's a lot of good passive healing. One trick with Jade Serpent Statue is when the room, when the game starts, start channeling Soothing Mist on somebody because even if you get CC'd, the statue keeps healing. It's not a lot of healing, but it's decent healing. 
And in the final row, again, Focus Thunder every single game. This gives you two charges of Thunder Focus T that can get empowered. Two spells get empowered by your Thunder Focus T. So you get two, two uh, charges right here. And I'll talk about Thunder Focus T, but you're pretty much going to be using those for Vivify almost every time. Um, but yeah, the two, the two charges of Thunder Focus T empowered spells are really, really good. And those are the regular talents you'll be running. Now for PvP talents, we actually surprisingly have a lot of good PvP talents we need to choose between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some scenarios on the screen for probably the most popular comps and just tell you what I run versus them. The first is going to be Ret Warrior. Now this is a very popular comp right now at every MMR. <clears throat> I've run into it on all my all it's between 1400 and 2800 MMR. So what that is is Ret Pally Arms or Fury Warrior, normally Fury Warrior and Holy Priest or Holy Pally or Resto Druid. And what I run versus that is Eminence, Disarm, and Peace Weaver. Those, those are the three talents I tend to play. Grapple Weapon is really good versus Fury Warriors because, again, Fury Warriors have a lot of damage. They need a weapon to do damage, so Grapple Weapon is really good. I run Peace Weaver for the Rep Pally damage because they do a lot of magic damage. They do mostly magic damage instead of melee damage or physical damage. And then Eminence is in case they swap to you. Now, if you are confident that you think that they won't go you, you can drop Eminence for potentially Chrysalis or a Zen Focus T, I would probably run Chrysalis because if you don't think they're gonna go you, why would you run Zen Focus T? But th that's a big if, you know. So I like to be a little bit safer with my talent choices. You know, Eminence is also really good for avoiding CC if they're playing with the rest of Druid, where they maybe bash you into Cyclone, you can actually port the Cyclone. So this is where I run versus melee cleaves most of the time. Now, if you're playing against a Death Knight, what I would do is I would drop Zen Focus, drop Grapple Weapon for Zen Focus T, because Death Knights have, especially on Holy Death Knights, they have a lot of ways to kick you. They have a Blanket Silence, they have the regular kick, and in the Holy Decays have their pet kick. So they actually have three ways to kick you against the Holy Decays. So I think Zen Focus T is best bet versus Death Knight. So just swap out these if you're playing against a Death Knight or non-Death Knight team versus melee cleaves. Another popular comp is RMP, which is Rogue Mage Priest. And what I run versus that is this. I run Eminence because this will help you if they swap to you or to avoid CC if they try to cheap shot or kidney shot you into a polymorph. Zen Focus T because you don't want to leave crowd control and then have a mage CS you. It actually feels awful. Or even a rogue step kick you. Feels awful. And then you just get put into more crowd control. So Zen Focus T for that. And then Peace Weaver has a few options in the RMP matchup. You could play, use it for combustion, which is normally what I use it with because mages will tend to have a minute and a half combustion if they run the pvp talent which they normally do and or it's also good for smoke bomb or shattery duel if it's a salty rogue so peace weaver really just a lot of good uses versus rogue mage so i, I wouldn't play it without i wouldn't play against rogue mage w without this talent versus teams with a lot of dots you'll probably see a lot of shadow priest destruction warlock shadow priest affliction warlock i tend to drop eminence and go healing spheres I love healing spheres and what it does if you've never played it before is if you put it on the ground it's going to take a second to bloom and it's a little healing sphere right here and what this does is when you or your teammate runs through it it dispels all dots on you and your teammate the hardest part about this is you need to make sure that they actually run through it it's really hard especially without voice to have play healing spheres but you get a lot of good value out of it you don't get any like if you normally spell ua you get silence to take damage if you run through a healing sphere you don't take damage or get silence so really really good versus ua locks and shadow priests uh you could play it versus ellie shaman but they don't really i feel like they have a harder time putting dots up than shadow priest which just cast it or affliction warlock so normally just play this versus shadow priests and affliction warlocks Finally, versus casters, you know, it's just a normal, it could be Demo Warlock with a Destruction Warlock. Anything with double caster that doesn't have an Affliction Warlock. I normally just play something like this, where I have Chrysalis, Zen Focus T, and Peace Weaver. I think this is good versus pretty much anything with double casters, because you have the Zen Focus T for silences and interrupts. You have Peace Weaver for any magic damage, and Chrysalis, which with the Life Cocoon buff by 33% recently, it's actually really solid. Chrysalis, I think, is one of the it was bad before, but with the buff to Cocoon, I think it's much better now. Um, and yeah, that's what I would run. The only other option, again, Miss Weaver has a lot of good talents. The only other option that you could change is if you're running into a Mage Priest or a Mage Warlock, a Mage Shaman, Shaman Priest, something with double purge, you might want to drop Chrysalis for Dome of Mist. And what this does is when Enveloping Mist is dispelled, it puts a shield on the target. So it increased your healing and shields you, which is really, really good. Now, is it going to get much value? Probably not until you get, I don't know, probably until you queue into the mage 
shaman or mage shadow priest team something like that it might be a little bit more difficult to use it but I think it's really good in those matchups. I definitely use this in twos versus Shadow Priest Fire Mage teams because they will try to life they will try to spell steal your um your enveloping mist and then you get a shield for more healing. So it's really, really good, but it doesn't seem much use because again, we have a lot of good PvP talents and yeah, those are pretty much all the scenarios I've run into. If you have another scenario that you're struggling with, please let me know. I am more than happy to, you know, type it out or make an updated version of this. Stat priority, I do get asked this quite often for a set, what stat? everything so let me quickly talk to you about this well i would recommend probably just going for verse mastery and just go for pvp gear from the vendor and you'll be fine go for verse mastery and then any gear that doesn't have mastery go for haste that's pretty much the rule of thumb i've been going with um i do pve a little bit so i do have a big verse mastery ring and a big verse mastery wrist that you won't find on the pve vendor that's fine just go for the haste first haste first and that's fine too as far as sockets go i just go full mastery you could go verse i think 32 percent verse is fine but there are people with like 35 percent verse again i think it works i think you just want to stack as much first mastery as you can big healing and you'll be fine the best comments from mistweaver hands down the best one is necrolord but i don't want to just give you one option because i think it's kind of boring but Venthyr is also a second option. I think Necrolord, however, is much better than Venthyr. I'll show you the Soul Binds and Conduits for them. Overall, I think Necrolord gives you Bone Dust Brew, which is an incredible heal. I mean, it is an amazing heal, and it's only on a one-man cooldown. Then you also have Fleshcraft, which makes you immune to CC. It also gives you a big mastery buff, so I get 187% mastery. And then you get a shield, too, which is really good versus openers against Rogue Mage and stuff like that, where teams can potentially open on you. So I think Necrolord is much better. Venthyr, three minute cooldown Fallen Order is amazing. Nothing will die in those 20 seconds that Fallen Order is up. However, it's a three minute cooldown and it's just too long of a cooldown in my opinion. Also with Necrolord, you do get the Unity... Where's my Unity? Unity Legendary, which gives you Bountiful Brew, which gives your Bonus Brew a chance to just proc off your heals or damage. And that's just amazing. I've had games where the uptime on Bonus Brew was like 80%. And if you don't know what that means, it's you just, your, your healing is crazy. Like your healing is actually insane. Um, you can outheal any damage if you have Cloud of Focus with uh, Bonus Brew up. I just think Necrolord is much better than Venthyr. The best soulbind for Necrolord is the Plague Divisor Merilith. She or he, I don't know what this thing is. It just gives you a lot of good tools. And I'll, I'll just run through it, show you what I use. Uh, first of all, I'll go with Volatile Solvent. This is what gives you the big mastery buff right here. It just gives you a ton of mastery. It's amazing. Uh, you're going to come down to the left-hand side and go for this Potency Conduit. And there's only really a few Potency Conduits you're going to be using, but Bone Marrow Hops is amazing. So what this does is normally Bone Dust Brew, you throw it, and there's a chance that your Bone Dust Brew heals, and then it does a decent amount of healing. But this Conduit makes it so when you do heal or do damage with it, it's increased by 96%. It's crazy. It's actually insane. So you, I've healed somebody from 2%. To 100% with a single vivify with a proc on this. So this is an amazing conduit. I would definitely recommend using it. Ooze's frictionless coating was nerfed in PvP by 50%. So you get a 7.5% shield when you drop below 50% health once every 30 seconds. Pretty good. Survivability wise, it's not, I don't think it's gonna make or break you surviving, but survivability is good too. Endurance conduit. I just go with fortifying ingredients because the shield, I, I don't know if you realize it, but the shield is massive. Like it's a 28,592 shield and it actually scales with your health. So you could, if you, I, if you for, if you uh, use emblem trinket and go for fort brew, it's actually the, the absorb is bigger. I, w I would recommend not stacking those cooldowns, but you could, if you were really in that much trouble uh, for this next one, nothing crazy. I think I go with Kevin's key ring. Cause I just, I don't know. I don't think there's any any difference between here. You get another potency conduit. Um, I would probably go with Resplendent Mist because most of your healing is through mastery because you're stacking mastery. And this gives your Gust of Mist a 30% chance to do 120% more healing. It's, it's actually amazing. You do so much healing. Um, and then from here, I would probably go... There's a few options here. I would recommend going for the second endurance conduit and going with either grounding breath or harm denial. Now, I, both of these are fine. Grounding breath makes it so when you cast vivify on yourself, the healing is increased and then has a chance to refund the mana cost. Or you could go harm denial, which increases the healing of expel harm. If you know me, I love expel harm. I I 
I think it's one of the best heals that we have. So I just go with Harm Denial. Again, you don't have to, but I would recommend going Harm Denial. And then you get Ultimate Form. And this is what makes it when you're channeling Fleshcraft right here. When you channel Fleshcraft, you're immune to CC. And then if you get a full channel, you're immune to, uh, to CC again for another three seconds. So really, really good. Um, really good in almost every matchup. It, you just avoid CC, which is amazing. Uh, and then you get a third potency conduit, which is another reason why this, this Soulbind is so good. Some people have to give up the potency conduit for maybe an endurance conduit or, or an effect not us we get a third potency conduit and then here you're going to go with nourishing chi and nourishing chi when you use life cocoon it makes your hots better and what this does is once life cocoon is down uh, that effect will will keep going for six seconds so i'll show you life cocoon increases our healing our hots healing over time effects and then if life cocoon goes away we get a buff makes makes our hots 41 percent stronger for six seconds so uh, you get a pretty good uh Good amount of time to get your hots up and it increases the healing of it which again is really good from here you could th these two paths you can kind of change i would recommend go with uh undulating maneuvers which makes it so um i think it's 80 percent. i thought it was 80 80 or 90 percent health right here 80 percent health um while you're above 80 percent health five percent of the damage taken is absorbed and spread over five seconds so it's like a stagger for brewmaster you just you know, 5% of it is a dot, essentially. Um, and then you can get, a, you can go with the finesse conduit. This is your first finesse conduit. And what you, what I like is lingering numbness. And what this does is it puts a slow. So this gives an 88% slow on the target. You could see once it breaks, the target is slowed for 88%. It's actually amazing. It's really good for kiting, especially warriors, stuff like that. Um, you could just, even if it breaks, gives 88% slow and it's awesome and then you get the final one this is just kevin's oozling it, he doesn't do anything special unfortunately he just does a little bit of damage and then makes it so your targets take six percent more damage nothing special now this other option again you could if you think teams are gonna you know go you or if you want a slow uh you can go vicious trail which is when you get hit you drop like a little puddle on the ground and it's a 70 percent slow it happens once every minute it's decent um if you want the third endurance conduit you could just go grounding breath and yeah and then go kevin i personally tend to go towards the the uh, undulating maneuvers get the i like lingering numbness go here and then just go kevin so that's what i do for necrolord i think this is your best bet uh best path for necrolord i didn't forget about venthyr I, in my opinion the best soul bind is gonna be theodore the mad duke he has a lot of good tools and I, a decent amount of healing so first you go with soothing shade and what this does is it gives your healing spells a chance to proc like a little fella with a umbrella and if you stand in it it increases your mastery 550 it's actually a huge mastery buff you can get the 200 plus mastery with it. it's actually crazy here you could honestly go either one of these i personally go to the left side and go with fortifying ingredients for the endurance conduit and then watch the shoes is what lets you use dwarf shadows to get you from roots and stairs I like that a lot because you can't use Dwarf Shadows when you're rooted without this. And it's really frustrating. So I just go that. However, you could go Lesurly Gate. And that make, gives Dwarf Shadows two charges. And its cooldown is increased by 30 seconds. Both are fine. I personally go watch the shoes. I like it a lot better. And then you get a Potency Connor. Here you're going to go with Imbued Reflection. This increases the healing and damage of Fallen Order by 87%. It's amazing. Fallen Order is already a pretty pretty good cooldown and this just amps it up it actually just makes it an insane cooldown and you're you can go either here i think if you do ember court you could go here i don't really do ember court so i just go for ingredients and then you get another uh, endurance conduit and you know again harm denial you can even go condensed atmosphere is fine too but i would probably go harm denial here and then this is kind of where it gets a little weird if you do rbgs i would go token of appreciation however we're doing arena and you're going to go with wasteland propriety so you're going to have to go with a finesse conduit which again will be lingering numbness and wasteland propriety what it does is when you use your fallen order it gives you the misweaver six percent versatility and then it gives and then it like gives drinks to everybody and it gives all of your teammates three percent versatility so it's a good defensive good offensive cooldown and it just keeps people alive so go go with this option but you did have to you did have to give up your second um in, uh potency conduit which is what sucks about it you get your second potency conduit here and i would recommend just going with resplendent miss you are not going to be able to get the other one the third one that we have and these two this is why it's a little awkward because these two are just weird um 
it's always tea time makes it so when your little fellow with the umbrella spawns you do more healing with your soothing mist as well or life is but an appetizer you don't even use this in arena it's when you're well fed you gain 60 speed and 60 endurance you can't eat in arena <laughs> so it's not useful however it's an endurance condo so you have to go with a useless soul bind which sucks and then you get the second endurance con or a third right you get a third endurance conduit and then you probably go grounding breath here so that's kind of why it sucks you don't have a third potency conduit and for nourishing chi and then you get third you know three uh, endurance conduits and you get the party favors which makes it so when you talk to theodore in your order hall you get a t uh right here and this gives you it, it, again the stats are random but it gives you four percent is it four percent or three mm. Actually, I think it's two. I'm pretty sure it's 2% uh, of either int, intellect, haste, crit, or verse. You don't get it, you don't get a say. It sucks. It's random. You could get crit, which is even more unfortunate. But you do get a chance of getting more verse or intellect, which is also amazing. But you could see why this I mean, Venthyr is good, but even the Soulbind is just not as good as Necrolord. Next up, we have legendaries, and I've mentioned Cloud of Focus a few times, so that's a legendary for Mistweaver. I'll talk about the different legendaries you're probably going to run, the different sets I use, and kind of the order I would make them in. And I'll, I'll start off with the most important legendary you're making is Cloud of Focus. Uh, what this does is when you heal with Enveloping Mist or Vivify, you get a buff that stacks up to three times. And what this buff does is it reduces the mana cost of your next Vivify or Enveloping Mist and also increase the healing of it. So... I'll show you. I'm going to just channel Soothing Mist. Boom, Vivify. I get a buff. It increases my next Vivify or Enveloping Mist and then also reduces the mana cost. And this stacks up to three times. So, but the problem is it's canceled as soon as you stop channeling Soothing Mist. That's the caveat of of uh, Cloud of Focus. You could keep, you could get stacks, but if you, if you move, those stacks are dropped. Again, though, Cloud of Focus is your best legendary. It gives you the most healing output, the most mana reduction. So, Cloud of Focus, number one legendary you should make. Use that. You will use Cloud of Focus in 99% of the matchups. You will not swap from this legendary. I'll show you the other legendaries where you'll use the... Um, you'll use probably two other legendaries. The next one is going to be Cephus. And what this does is it reduces crowd control on you by 10%. Just flat out 10% reduced CC on you. And then if you what if you dispel a target or if you interrupt, you don't have an interrupt, so it's mostly just dispelling. Or if you incap somebody, you get stats. You will use this versus Rogue Mage Priest. That's when you use this. It reduces stuns on you. It reduces all CC on you. So that's when you use Cephus. And then the last legendary. Now, this one is definitely a weird one, but I would also craft Escape from Reality. And what this does is it lets you port twice. So... Um, it gives you you can port once and then after 10 seconds you can port again um so i'll just port and then you can see i have no cooldown and then i have this little buff that makes it so i can try i can port again and i port and then it also increases the healing of your vivify on yourself so that's why it's really good for for um survivability i would play this versus if you think a rogue nah if you think a rogue mage if you're playing it's the same rogue mage team over and over and they're killing you play this i would also play this versus walking dead so wouldn't walk dk usually those types of teams will run you down because you don't really have a lot of ways to deal with their slows and their damage so Play escape from reality versus that. If you do a lot of twos, it could be good versus Windwalkers too. Just know that if they don't go you, it's kind of a waste of a legendary and you're going to do a lot less healing. But it's still a really good way for survivability. And those are the three legendaries I would make. I don't think there's any other legendary for PvP that I would, that I would make. As far as where to craft your legendary, I would recommend probably making unity on your chest with verse mastery because there is no verse master chest on the pvp vendor and then you get the haste verse on your belt and then if you don't have a verse mastery bracer which you probably don't because you just pvp i would just make cloud of focus on your bracers and get the verse mastery neck that's what i would do so your set would look something like this you would have the verse mastery neck and then you would have the cloud of focus on your wrist and this is what your set would look like which again is perfect in my opinion i think this is great um if you do find yourself wanting a little bit more mastery you could go for the for the cloud of focus on the neck i wouldn't unity on your chest cloud of focus on your bracers and then for cephus what i do is pretty much i just keep unity on my chest and i just put cephus on my shoulders and that's pretty much it i put the verse mastery 
neck on, and then I also have the normal bracers. And then for Escape from Reality, it's pretty much the same thing. Unity on your chest, and I have Escape from Reality on my neck. And those are the different slots I would put my legendaries on. Before I start talking about the healing rotation from Mistweaver, I want to talk about our spells and just get you familiar with what spells you'll be using a lot of the time. The first, again, Bone Dust Brew, if you're Necrolord, get used to pressing it, putting on a really comfortable keybind. You're going to be using it a lot whenever your team is taking damage. Expel Harm won't be used you know, too often, but it does have situations where you will be using it. So I would recommend, um, you know, get Expel Harm in a pretty good keybind. Uh, that's pretty much it for these. Vivify, this is your, this is your heal. This is basically your entire healing rotation. So yeah, put that on a key. You can spam a little bit, but yeah, Vivify again. Um, what it does, this is important is what it will heal your teammate for single target. And then anyone with renewing mist on them. Okay. That is very, very important because if you don't have renewing mist on people, you're only going to be vivifying with one heal. But if you're healing somebody with Renewing Mist on them, they're going to get healed for Vivify, and they're going to get healed again with Vivify because they have Renewing Mist on them, and then any teammates without it. So, but Renewing Mist, and again, Renewing Mist is another important spell. It's a hot. That's pretty much it. It does decent healing. But you need to put this, always have it going. Always have it recharging. Put it on as many people as possible. Use your Vivify for cleave healing and single target healing. Uh, Enveloping Mist, I spoke about it earlier. Your best hot, your best heal. And what it does is it's, again, it's a hot. And then it also increases the healing that your teammate takes from you by 40%. So when when you have play against a team that's spam purging you, it's brutal if you can't get Enveloping Mist out. That's why I play Dome Mist Talent. Um, but again, Enveloping Mist increases the healing that your teammate takes from you by 40%. So that's important. Essence Font, not really used in Arena. You could. It has situations where it's decent, but it's just not good it's a lot of mana it does give you double mastery though which makes it you know it decent but again i really very rarely use essence font arena i half the time i don't even have it on my bar healing elixir i spoke about when we talk about talents this is just gonna give you free healing it's free healing for yourself i mean why not use it it's amazing invoke yulon <clears throat> she's all right you know she'll uh this is normally the first talent i use or the first uh, cooldown that I use versus teams, it she what she does is you summon her and then you it, she doesn't do anything until you use enveloping mist and then you get a huge hot on you, which again and then takes you take ten percent extra healing. So with these two, you get fifty percent extra healing from from you, which is really good. But uh, she does cost a lot of mana and then she's a three minute cooldown. Life cocoon, your primary you know iconic mistweaver defensive is life cocoon. It's just a big absorption shield. It is based off of health percentage. So what you'll see me do almost every game, every time I use it, is I will use Cosmic Gladiator's Emblem. And what this does, it increases my health by 25,000. And then I'll use Life Cocoon. So Life Cocoon right now absorbs 64,981 damage. If I Battle Master, it absorbs 85,000. And if you wanted to do more, you could actually Fort Brew. Don't do this. And it makes your Life Cocoon absorb 98,000. My entire health pool is just an absorption shield do not stack all three of these cooldowns ever but it is something to note you could and but with battle master i do um battle master is two minute cooldown life cocoon is two minute cooldown they line up really well and that's what I, that's normally what i use when i use life cocoon um <coughs> excuse me renewing mist is your hot It'll, you know, you put it on as many people as possible. Has two charges. Always have it recharging at all times, and you'll be fine. Uh, revival, very important cooldown. This will, you know, make your teammates immune, especially with the Peace Weaver talent, where it makes you it reduce the cooldown by fifty percent, and then makes everyone immune to magic and harmful effects. Very important versus pretty much anyone that with magic damage. So, revival is really good. Not a healing spell, but Ring of Peace, my favorite one. And then Soothing Mist, of course. I mean we all you know soothing mist what it does is normally vivify has a cast time and velping mist has a cast time but with soothing mist what you can do is you get soothing mist that makes vivify and enveloping mist instant so basically you're casting everything and we have stature i talked about that uh, oh mastery i keep talking about mastery i haven't actually explained it I, I apologize what our mastery is is it's called mastery gust of mists what this does is whenever you use renewing mist enveloping mist expel harm vivify or revival so basically whenever you heal there's gonna be a second smaller heal 
and my mastery heals for 5,989. So I'll just show you in the combat log real quick. Um, I will make this a little bit smaller. So if I just threw, threw, threw a Vivify, boom, you'll see the Gust of Mist healed for 6K. My Vivify healed for 5.7K. So if you have a lot of, if you have a lot of mastery, you will do a lot of healing. <laughs> that's why you stack mastery. And that's pretty much it for our healing spells. Again, we do lack cooldowns compared to other healers, but we do what we lack in cooldowns, we make up for in healing output. Another passive I want to quickly talk about before I talk about healing rotation, and it's not actual heal, but it is Mystic Touch. And what this does is when you damage somebody, it increases the physical damage they take by 5%. And this is very important if you're playing with any kind of class or spec with physical damage. Warriors, Hunters, any pretty much any melee, you want to use it. So what this means is when I, I'm trying to find one I can do damage to this one. So if you do any damage, you're going to put Mystic Touch up and it increases the physical damage you take by 5%. Now... If you're playing with a warrior or something and you're taking a lot of damage and you, don't, you can't keep this up 100% of the time, perfectly fine. I would highly recommend using this, you know, either Crackling Jade Lightning, you could Rising Sun Kick, you could Spinning Crane Kick and just roll through them. Anything, any damage you do will put this uh, debuff on them. Use it when you're, you're when your warrior or whoever is doing damage. That's pretty much it. If your warrior is going in for Stormbolt and they Stormbolt somebody, just tr quickly zap the target and put Mystic Touch on them. Just quickly, just zap them. And then just go back to healing or, you know, you know, peeling or CCing, do whatever you want. But try your best to put Mystic Touch up debuff on, on whenever your team is doing damage. The basic healing rotation for Mistweaver is, is just that. It's pretty basic. What you're going to be doing 90% of the game is you're just going to put Renewing Mist on your teammates and you're going to be using Vivify to heal. That's literally the basic healing rotation. And then you're going to use Enveloping Mist if your team is in trouble. Um, there's really nothing else to it, but it is very important that you put Renewing Mist up on as many people as possible. It's very important. That is, again, your most important heal. And then Thunder Focus T is what makes the rotation a little bit complex. So basically in rotation, put Renewing Mist on your teammates, use Vivify for single target healing. If they start to take a lot of damage, throw an Enveloping Mist out as well, and you'll be fine. Now, Thunder Focus T is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. And what this does, and remember, we're using the talent... Uh, Focus Thunder, which gives us two empowered healing spells. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, we're using the Cloud of Focus Legendary. And I, like I explained before, anytime you use Vivify or Enveloping Mist, it reduces the mana cost of the next Vivify or Enveloping Mist, and then also increases the healing of it. So this is where it gets a little complicated, but once you get it down, you'll be fine. Um, what you're going to use with Thunder Focus T, again, two charges of it. Vivify costs no mana. So you're going to Soothing Mist. Thunder Focus T, Vivify, Vivify, costs no mana. But you get two stacks of Cloud of Focus and a ton of healing. And then you're going to follow up with Enveloping Mist. And that's your single target and, and spread healing. Uh, what that does is Thunder Focus T, two free Vivifies, gives you two stacks of Cloud of Focus, which increase the healing of your next Vivify or Enveloping Mist by 40%. You can even go for a third Vivify and then follow up with Enveloping Mist. Always, I would rec especially if you're taking damage, always follow it up with Enveloping Mist because... It's going to do 60% more healing for 60% less mana. It's your best heal, and it's amazing. And on top of all that, your mastery is also healing. And, uh, and on top of all this, you have Gust of Mist hitting for 12k. You have Gust of Mist healing for 17k. Like uh, You have a Gust of Mist for 13k. So on top of all this healing, you also have your mastery healing. So keep that in mind. That's that's And that's really the complexity of the rotation. There's really nothing else to it. Um, but there are people that kind of struggle with mana and there's a few reasons. One, if you use your cloud of focus and you get some stacks or you, if you use your, sorry, if you use your thunder focus T and you get two stacks of cloud of focus and then you move, you drop those stacks of cloud of focus. You don't have a strong enveloping mist or, you know, any stacks. And I, you know, when I started getting used to it, I ran into that issue too. What you need to do is you kind of need to plan ahead and you need to be a little bit of a mind reader as far as who, what the other team is doing. You know, you can't heal the wrong target either. You know, you need to have your healing rolling when they're doing damage. So what you do is after CC, you got to plant your feet, especially if you have Zen Focus T as well. Zen Focus T, very powerful. This is basically guaranteed healing for five seconds as long as they don't CC you. And what you can do is you Soothing Mist, you Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist. Or you see the mist thunder focus T with its in focus T, you get your stacks, and then you get your healing out, and then you move, and then you can reposition. Tr don't reposition before you get your healing out because if you drop those cloud of focus stacks, it's gonna again, it's gonna take a few more globals to start healing. 
and get that healing back up again. And that's how you're going to run out of mana. I've run into that issue before, and it sucks. So just keep that in mind. Also, Bone Dust Brew. This cannot be used while using Soothing Mist. So what you normally do, or what I normally do, is I will lob the Bone Dust Brew towards my team and then start channeling Soothing Mist. And by the time it by the time it does have a travel time, so by the time it gets there, um, normally I'll be able to just spam healing. But yeah, it does have a little bit of a travel time, so just be aware of that. It is kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, that is the basic rotation. Something else you could do with Thunder Focus T and Cloud of Focus is another use for Thunder Focus T is your enveloping mist immediately heals for 9,651. It could change depending on you know a bunch of stats. But so what you could do is you could use your Thunder Focus T with soothing mist go for a vivify and then go if your teammate is low go for a big enveloping mist and it'll heal for a lot and you'll get a ton of mastery with it i don't know how much it's the enveloping mist healed for 9k i think that's just the hot though um it does a large amount of healing so use your thunder focus the enveloping mist for when your teammate is really low and then outside of that using thunder focus for vivifies when your teammates are at like you know, anything above 30% health, you'll be you'll be using Vivify. And anything below that, you're going to want to use Thunder Focus E for Enveloping Mist for the instant heal. And then followed up with Vivify Enveloping Mist. I will reiterate one more time. Renewing Mist on your teammates as much as possible. Always have Renewing Mist recharging at all times. Use your Vivifies and your Thunder Focus T for free Vivifies. Get to three stacks, two or three stacks, and use Enveloping Mist. If you there are interrupts, use your Zen Focus T and keep healing. Try not to drop your cloud of focus stacks, you know, by moving and dropping soothing mist because then you're just going to run out of mana and you're not going to have like strong healing when you when damage is going out. And there will be times where you don't have cloud of focus. For example, you will be using Sephus versus Rogue Mage. Rotation, exactly the same. Versus Rogue Mage or wherever you're using Sephus, which is Rogue Mage essentially, you, you're getting CC'd so much you will never run out of mana. You, you will never, you could try your hardest and you not run out of mana. So... What you're going to be doing is you're just, again you're going to keep renewing mist on as many teammates as possible and then you're just going to use thunder focus team enveloping mist when someone's low because you get the big empower you, you know get the big enveloping mist heal, and then you also get the free vivifies so you'll be fine you will never run out of mana and the rotation is pretty much the same one last healing rotation that you should know about is our instant healing rotation and i know when people think and talk about mist weaver they don't exactly think of instant healing but you do actually have some instant healing especially if teams are targeting you and this is where the spell essence font comes into play now it does give a hot when you press it and it is channeled but there is a second paragraph where it says gust of mist will heal affected targets twice so that means if I use Essence Font and I use Renewing Mist, for example, that procs our mastery, we will get healed twice for Gust of Mist, not just once. So what that means is what you will do is you will, you will use uh, a macro or one of the macros that I have for stop casting. It's literally just, just stop casting. I think it, I showed it earlier, um, but if I did not put it in the description as well. And what you're going to do is you're going to channel Essence Font and then you're going to instantly cancel it. That way you get the hot and then you have instant healing with your, uh, your Renewing Mist your Expel Harm. And on top of that, you could also go Bone Dust Brew. So ideally, when teams are targeting you, what you're going to do is you'll Bone Dust Brew yourself. And this gives you a chance to get a bunch of Masher. You're going to Essence Font cancel it. And you're going to Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, Expel Harm. And th that healing alone is so much healing. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I mean, I probably just heal. I could probably show it on the target dummy once Bone Dust Brew, if I can get a Bone Dust Brew proc, but that easily will keep you topped. Now, it is a little bit RNG because Bone Dust Brew, you know, it, it's a chance to heal, not not guaranteed, but even without it, the double mastery from Essence Font is really nice. And you can also do this when your teammates are taking damage. You could use Essence Font and you could use two Renewing Mist on them. You can't really use Expel Harm instantly on a teammate, which is a little unfortunate, but... Uh, that's okay. Um, if the instant healing from Renewing Mist is normally enough, and then if you can get a quick Vivify in there, you should be more than you should have more than enough healing to keep them alive, or at least stall out time for Zen Focus T. All right, so we have Bone Dust Brew back. So let's see how much healing we do with uh, Bone Dust Brew, and then you're gonna Essence Font cancel heal, and you're gonna Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, Expel Harm. So we do 138,000 healing instantly.
This is all instant healing. Uh, you could see most of the healing is Gust of Mist followed by Bonus Brew. Uh, we did get some pretty lucky procs there and then Expel Harm healed for a decent amount. So even though Essence Font won't heal for a lot, the hot doesn't heal for a decent amount, it's still the double mastery is why you're using it because you get the double mastery. And again, it's all instant. And like I said before, you could also use it on your teammate minus the Expel Harm. You could use the Bonus Brew, then you use the Essence Font Cancel and then you use Renewing Mist and then you're fine. Ideally, you're going to do this until you have, you're going to try to stall out enough time when doing this to you know maybe get um zen focus t back or life cocoon or something some kind of mobility but either way it's really good for when teams are focusing you or if you know there's a lot of kicks available and you need to hear your teammate and it just helps out um that way you don't have to get kicked one thing I almost forgot to mention are Mistweaver defensives and how to play defensively because in my opinion, the highest skill cap of Mistweaver and the best movers out there know how to play defensive and rotate their cooldowns. So let me go over your cooldowns that, are, you know, that will keep you alive and then how you should ideally rotate them when teams are trying to swap to you or kill you or if you find yourself in situations where you're taking unnecessary damage. Uh, the first one is Fleshcraft. This is a Necrolord spell, and it, you know, I've spoken about it before, but it makes you immune to CC. It also gives you more mastery. It also gives you a shield, and it's another school of casting. So if you get kicked on it, you can still cast your normal spells, which is amazing. Um, Fortifying Brew, it, it is a three minute cooldown, unfortunately, but. It also will increase your max health by 15% and then reduce damage taken by 15%. As well as if you're playing the Endurance Condor at Fortifying Ingredients, it actually gives you a huge shield. So that's pretty good. Mine right now gives a, almost a 30k shield, which is very, very nice. Um, and then you have Transcendence and, and Transcendence Transference. So ideally what you're going to do is you're going to put your port behind a pillar. And whenever you feel like you need to avoid CC or you need to avoid damage, you just port and I'll go over the rotation of how you should go through defensives. Um, your mobility is a big defensive, Chi Torpedo. It's very important to stay as far away as you can. Even when you're slowed, just try to Chi Torpedo away from people, create distance. This is where Ring of Peace comes in great as a defensive um, ability because if you roll away and teams try to get to you, you can roll, and then you could put like a little ROP here, maybe around the pillar, and you just keep running away, and you're normally fine after that. Life Cocoon is... Um, your primary defensive cooldown for yourself and your teammates. So keep that in mind. Um, both Life Cocoon and Revival are your basically the only cooldowns you have for your teammates. So those are normally the last cooldowns you use. And then Zen Focus T, I would say, is another pretty big defensive cooldown because it, it, apart from it being reduced by 15 seconds in the latest patch, um, this gives you guaranteed healing as long as you're not CC'd. So usually I use Zen Focus T when I come out of crowd control and then you can just get the guaranteed healing for five seconds, which is more than enough time to actually top somebody. The order in which I would I would use your defensive cooldowns would be this. I would start with Transcendence. So Transcendence is great for when you're taking damage, especially in combination with Eminence, but be careful. If you use tran uh, Transcendence while stunned, your port is gonna have a 45 second cooldown. If you don't use it while stunned, it's actually reduced by 15 seconds. So it's a 30 second cooldown, which is nice, which is why you'll see a lot of misweavers. Um, try not to port instantly when you get stunned. Wait to see a cooldown. You know, wait until you see warriors start using their conqueror's banner. Wait until you see rogue use vendetta. Wait until you see some kind of combustion from the mage. Something like that, because otherwise they're gonna try to bait your port, and then you don't have you don't have a port while stunned. And then next go you're probably gonna have to trink it. So port is always my first go to defensive. Try to be greedy with it. That way, when you port, it's actually a 30 second cooldown outside of the stun instead of a 45 second cooldown. The next cooldown I will use is Zen Focus T. This is a great cooldown for when you just leave crowd control. Ideally, you use it after you leave crowd control, not before you're crowd controlled, because if you're playing against Rogue Mage, for example, and you use Zen Focus T, the mage could technically Dragon's Breath and poly you, and then you leave the crowd control, and you don't have it, and they have two interrupts for you. So keep that in mind. It is probably not ideal to use it before crowd control it's still decent especially if there's like if there's a warlock on the other team they're kind of and you know they can't really get to you because you're playing so far away then yeah it's fine but against rogue mage be careful another little trick you can use with zen focus t is against jungle or hunter teams uh, they have the scorpid sting that will slow you and then silence you you can actually just silence it or you could use your zen focus t or fleshcraft and immune that silence and then you don't get silence which is really nice um so yeah, the those so those are the two major defensives you should use first. Uh, the next defensives are your trinket, which I know it sounds weird, but I think uh, medallion plus cocoon is probably one of your biggest cooldowns in the game. 
And then, yeah, also have Revival. So outside of those, those are your next ones. Save your Life Cocoon for last or, or Revival. Use them for last, depending on what you're queuing to. Your Revival is mostly used against teams like Warlocks, for example. It, it's very situational. When a Warlock uses Dark Soul, you use your Revival. However, in other situations like Rogue Mage, you could use it for a combustion, but sometimes you're in a polymorph. You could also use it for Shadowy Duel or Smoke Bomb on your team. So there are a lot of uses for Revival. You could always use it aggressively too. Sometimes I will use it aggressively for close to a kill. Pretty much if your team's going in for a kill and they're playing against like a Mage Warlock and you, you know they can spam CC, you can actually just Revival, make your teammates immune for two seconds, and then hopefully get a kill. It is risky though. Wouldn't recommend it. And then the last cooldown I would say you want to rotate is life cocoon this should be your last cooldown that you use uh, mostly because it's basically the only cooldown you have for your teammates um, you don't want to use life cocoon on yourself and then have your teammates have no cooldowns left for them um, i don't want to see if there's any i forgot oh uh fortifying brew yeah so fortifying brew is the next cooldown i would use after port and zen focus t the reason for this is if you can get a fortifying brew before you get stunned or, or silenced or something it's, it's so powerful because you have the damage reduction the max health and then you also have a big shield on you so that's really really good really really powerful so the order i would go in as far as defensive cooldowns would be definitely port first port first no matter what when in doubt just pour it out and you'll be fine uh zen focus t if there's kicks available fortifying brew if you you know if you the other team has stuns and they're really training you use that before you get stunned and you're looking great um and then you have revival and cocoon depending on what you're queuing into a minor defensive would be emblem but i normally stack that with life cocoon because it makes life cocoon absorb like eighty six thousand, which is amazing as far as trinkets go nothing really changes if you are orc you're gonna play a gladiator's medallion which is what gets you out of crowd control and then you're gonna want to use emblem and I the reason you're going to use Emblem is one, it's a really good defensive for when teams go you. And if you get kicked or silenced or something like that, it's really, really good. But it also buffs your life cocoon. If you're queuing into magic damage, you could run Aegis as well. This is another good trinket that um, absorbs 50% of all magic damage up to about 30,000 for 15 seconds. Really good into anything with casters or with magic damage. So try that out. If you are human, I don't actually have the trinket, I don't think. I don't have the trinket. You're going to want to run Cosmic. I think it's Relentless or something like that. Relentless trinket. And what it does is absorbs it. Not absorbs. It reduces 20% of CC on you. And then if you're human, you'll have the every man for himself. So keep that in mind. And then you'll still run the same secondary trinket. You'll either run Emblem or Aegis. I get asked about macros a lot. So I'm just going to go through every single macro that I have. I will also have a link in the description for all my macros. They're all yours. You can have them. I'm not trying to hide hide any of them um so these first macros are for my trinkets and what it does is it's just slash use 13 slash use 14 these are the 13 slot 14 slot and what it does is if you trink if you trade if you change your trinket it changes it on your bar that's pretty much it that way you don't have to keep dragging your your trinket onto your bar every single game you just get to swap it out um i've in cap one two three i have them hidden just because i don't like how it looks but this is where they are hidden um they are right here and what it does is it just in caps arena one two or three i like arena one two three macros you could also have focus macros that's just kind of what i prefer bone dust brew i have on a cursor so that way you don't have to click the ground twice you could just throw it and or click and throw it which i think is good um invoke yulon uh with big red ray gun it's a toy it is that's it when you, you use yulon it she turns big and red yep that <laughs> that's the macro uh none of these really do anything chicha rapido used to prismatic bubble roll oh this is what the this is how i get the little rainbow behind me prismatic bubble is a toy a lot of my macros are just <laughs> toys so you know if you're not having fun you know what's the point Jade Lightning, I don't need. That's a focus one. Not really that good. These are Covenant ones. Uh, this is my Escape from Reality. Not Escape from Reality. My Essence Font Grapple Weapon. So what it does is it'll cast Essence Font, but it tracks the cooldown of Disarm. That's pretty much... I use, that's mostly for PvE. I, PvP, you don't really use Essence Font. None of these are really anything good. Infernal. So what this does is it'll target infernal greater earth elemental or kevin and then it'll cast provoke and what this does is it will attempt to taunt them so that you it'll break cc on you um 
I would say ta taunting greater earth elemental versus shaman is really good because it normally breaks hexes or like I don't know if they're playing with a the rogue, it could break blind. So stuff like that is pretty good. And let's see, uh, life cocoon. So this macro is probably the most important macro in this entire video. Please take this macro, ignore all these toys, take this part right here, please. What this does is this will not cast life cocoon on anyone except a living target who is a teammate. And if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you. Right now, I'm not targeting anybody and I'm gonna press life cocoon and it's not gonna go off. It's not gonna go off. If you're targeting somebody who's dead in RBGs, for example, and you press life cocoon, you'll life cocoon yourself. If you target somebody who's mind controlled, and you press life cocoon it will you will life cocoon yourself this macro prevents that from happening so please take this macro and use it that way you never have to let accidentally life cocoon ever ever again so now i target a teammate boom life cocoon gets used please take that macro it is the most important macro i have in my opinion um mount macro is nothing crazy this is I. This is a script I run from um, one two three. It puts one two three as the arena frames because again I use arena one two three macros. I have two healing sphere macros, and what this does is let me spec into healing sphere, healing sphere, and what this does is well the first one will put out a cursor, and this one will target on myself. So, boom. You see I have a lot of like mouse over or um at cursor macro. So boom, orb spawns right on, right on my cursor. What the second one does is it will target it'll put a healing sphere on me so I, I press it it'll put a healing sphere on myself and you can't do that for any other player besides yourself but it's really good that you could do it for yourself so normally what i'll do versus affliction world extra shadow breeze is i'll put a port down and then i'll healing sphere right on top of it and then healing sphere when i port i'll take the healing sphere so that macro is pretty good i like it a lot um this is a focus in cap paralysis no a, re a party one two three dispel I would recommend any healer use this just because it's really it makes it so you dispel really fast you don't have to target you know you don't have to target your teammate you don't have to target yourself you just use it on whoever is cc'd um this is the transcendence macro i have i can't use it i don't think i can use it if i'm not in a group no but it puts a world marker on your on your port uh this is a provoke another provoke macro where it'll provoke pets so I have separate key mines for this provoke and then the provoke up here. What this does, if I'm playing against a hunter or something like that, where they have a pet or a warlock, I would try to taunt a pet to break CC. You'll normally see me try to taunt a pet before I get frozen uh, trapped or if I'm putting a fear or something like that or anything like that, I'll use provoke. It's pretty good. Um, another script I run to be put on the bottom of arena frames. I, that's just what my personal preference. You don't have to actually use that um nothing here talent just is just a talent macro that switches between song and any of these that way i don't have to keep dragging it onto my bar uh same thing with this one right here um i should have it diffuse magic yep dampen harm see it changes right here on my bar depending on what i choose tier six another one it changes oh i don't have it oh you want to what because i made that cursor i don't change from these anyway so it's fine um these that's pretty much it for macros uh for these this is a is this a help harm macro yeah so this is a help harm macro i it's taking me a little while to get used to it but what it does is if you're targeting an enemy it should use crackling jade lightning but for some reason it doesn't want to on ship oh it's oh it's you oh this is a tiger palm one that's why this is this is the crackling jade lightning one this is the one i use so what this does is if you're targeting an enemy it'll use crackling jade lightning if you're targeting a teammate it'll cast soothing mist Help save a keybind. It's pretty good. It's quick. It's nice. Um, Life cocoon. No. Ring of peace. Ring of peace is just at cursor. Again, a lot of at cursor macros. Same with statue right here. Uh, I just have at cursor macros so that I don't, you know, save time. So it saves time. Uh, and then that is pretty much it. Zen focus. No, I don't use that one. So, oh, and then I have arena one, two, three for disarm. You see right here. If I go back to grapple weapon, these should. Yep. Uh, I use grapple weapon one two three. So again, I use a lot of one two three macros, a lot of at cursor macros. Nothing crazy though. And uh, all, again, all the macros are in the description, so they're all yours. You can have them all. As far as utility goes, this is where Miss Weaver lacks. We don't have much. We have grapple weapon, which is the extent of our utility. Tiger's Lust is really bad for like teammates, unless you're queuing into mage. But grapple weapon really good versus warriors. You could also use it for death knights to 
to make them not heal with their death strike but grapple weapon is probably your best utility technically peace weaver you could use aggressively i do use sometimes because it does make everyone immune to magic effects which includes cyclone polymorphs so if your team's about to get a kill sometimes not every time don't do it a lot i will use peace weaver to make my teammates immune to like polymorphs or fears or coils and then try to go in for a kill but you're, again ring of peace 2 is pretty good utility because you could use it for interrupts um, repositioning the other team, generally just being annoying, um, help yourself and help your teammates from, you know, taking damage. But that's our best utility. We don't have a lot of it, but that's, that's our utility. Positioning is what makes or break winning and losing games, especially on a misweaver who doesn't have a lot of cooldowns to trade or even have anything to avoid CC besides port. So what you need to do on a Mistweaver when it comes to avoiding crowd control is uh, the pillar is your best friend that <laughs> you're right here the whole game uh stay very close to the pillar use the pillar to your advantage if you are going to push in for crowd control i would recommend rolling in getting an in cap and then either porting out or using your second roll to get out of there you don't want to stay in the middle of the map for very long because if you get put in the middle of the map what happens is the other team will either cc you and you know your teammate will die or they will swap to you and then you will die so positioning although it's very complicated but Pretty much what it comes down to is just stay on the pillar as much as you can, as often as you can, healing your teammates with soothing mist and healing, and then using lining to avoid CC, using your port as well as a tool to avoid it. Which brings me to port placement. Port, again, is a very powerful tool for avoiding CC or damage on you. I would recommend putting it behind the pillar at the start of the game, but you do want to get used to moving your port around the map when you move so for example if my team you know starts here this is the starting room you know let's just say the game is about to start I, what i would do is i put my statue down i'd put my port on the pillar and then i'll just kind of chill behind here put soothing mist on somebody and then start healing but let's just say my team decides to push in i would probably roll onto this side of the pillar reset my statue very important and then reset your port you never want to be out you never want to outrange your port ever. And then what I would do is I'd probably heal here. Hopefully they don't go around this side of the pillar. And then I can heal here and everything's fine. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have your, you know, have our team move. And then you move to this side of the map. And then you have no port or statue. So again, make sure port and statue. If a team is training you to the ground, what you can do and what I often do is put your port in the middle of the map. And I know this sounds weird. I know, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag them behind the pillar, and you as soon as they do either damage or that you know they start to slow you or they use the mobility, you're gonna port and then roll across the map. And I'm gonna I'm I do plan on having an entire series on port placement for every single map. But for now, that's the gist. Um, if you're playing against a team that doesn't train you, put your port behind a pillar to help you avoid CC. If you are getting trained, put your port in the middle of the map so that way you could port and roll away add-ons so I, I do get asked quite often what add-ons i use i i do mythic plus and raid and pet battle which is the most important content in the game so a lot of these add-ons you know are for that but there are some good ones i do have for pvp the first is advanced advanced interface options back at, before wad you used to have a lot more options in the interface and this one doesn't i mean since then they removed it I don't really use this for anything besides floating combat text for healing and damage. Actually, there's times I don't even have it for healing. So floating combat text is really good with advanced interface options. This is battle pet battleground enemies is for RBGs. Big debuffs, huge. Recommend this for anybody. What this does is it puts a big debuff on your nameplate. So or on uh, your raid frame so you can see what you can dispel. Uh, details is just for tracking, you know, damage and healing. Diminish. So what this does is it will track DRs on you or whoever literally anybody and what i normally do is i put it on myself so if i toggle the moving frames i track drs on myself and then my uh the arena enemies and i think it's really really important for that um dominoes is just my interface so oh and again all of my add-ons and like all the files for it are in the description so please take it they're all yours it's free all all yours dominoes is just for my ui easy frames is just right here it just helps me see health and mana a little bit easier than from the default frames uh, leatrix plus really really good add-on here what this does is it lets you customize a lot of your ui stuff um, the example i use is buffs so usually buffs are up here what i do is this i could scale it to whatever i want i can move it anywhere i just have it set to 120 percent it makes it a little bit easier for me and then 
I think I have the same. Where's my debuffs? I, I, I think it's the same for debuffs too. It man, uh, buffs and debuffs get scaled and move down. Um, but it does so much more than that. You can do text, chat, solo shoot, everything. Like it, there's frames. Like there's so much you can do with this that I don't, I don't really use. Um, and you should take a look at it because I would recommend you know downloading it and, and customizing to however you want. Um, nameplate auras. This is what makes it so in cap and paralysis and leg sweepers big over the enemy enemy nameplate. Nameplate cooldowns. This is what shows the cooldowns under enemy health health bars. Uh, Omni bar is what tracks the cooldowns. So this will track spells. Uh, this will track interrupts the spells, defensive spurs, cooldowns. I can quickly show you. I can test it. Boom. And that shows all of the burst cooldowns that people have. So, very, very good. Very handy. I would, what, staple staple add-on to use. Um, Reflex is what shows my previous arena games. I would recommend it just because it's good to keep track of what you've queued into. And S Arena is what I use to, you know, track, you know, the arena enemies and that is pretty much it for add-ons i try not for pvp i try not to use too many for pvp i do use quite a bit for mythic plus but as far as pvp goes there aren't too many add-ons that i actually use and again those are all in the description so they're all yours best 2v2 comps out there i get asked this often outlaw best healer or i get asked what the best 2v2 comps are for miss weaver hands down outlaw rogue is the best teammate you can have for twos if you find Outlaw Rogue, use it. Uh, Fury Warrior is also really good. Death Knight is also pretty pretty decent. Same with um, Demon Hunter. Those will get kind of countered by Acid Rogues because they do a lot of damage. But for the most part, pick a melee and play it. If you want to play with the caster, Demo Warlock. If I had to just do a tier list of maybe top three or four that you can go with, Outlaw Rogue is number one. Fury Warrior, number two. Demo Warlock, number three. And number four could be Windwalker, Demon Hunter, Death Knight. So anything anything from there you'll be you'll be fine in twos in threes you're probably still best off playing mage lock which is kind of counters our mystic touch passive but mage lock is just too good not to heal they survive pretty well and then with the life cocoon buff you're doing much more healing and much more absorption so um yeah you're good with mage lock turbo as well red warrior any of those comps is really really good i play thunder which is pretty decent as well so anything like that and you will you'll be killing it and that is pretty much it for me thank you so much for anyone who has watched this far i doubt anyone will get to this point but if you have thank you so much um i hope this was helpful for anyone either experienced with miss weaver or new to miss weaver if you have any questions at all please let me know i am more than happy to answer any questions you have it is my favorite thing to do so please leave a comment down below if you have any questions and that's pretty much it for me hope everyone's a fantastic rest of your day hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you later